Hi guys, it's Michaela with Your Everyday Woman. So, as mentioned in the last video, I have struggled with eating in the past. So I thought I would share my experience with you guys. Um, this is the most personal video I've done. Most of my videos I try to keep fairly lighthearted. But this is something that is near and dear to my heart and I just, I'd like to share it. But before I jump into it, I've got a few disclaimers for you guys. Um, I was never anorexic. I was never bulimic. I was never insecure about my body. I am simply a skinny person without even trying. And I am not a doctor or a medical professional, so if you need advice on that, go check out your doctor or medical professional. So with that, let's just get on into it. Uh, the start of this was in high school. You know, it's most likely to do to a stressful senior year. I had a lot going on, and scholarship stuff, and just whatever else I was doing at the time. Um, I, you know, remember thinking like, hey, I'm not really hungry, but didn't really think much about it at the time. At college, uh, I had a lot of classes, a lot of homework. It was a lot more than I expected. I really didn't think too much of it at the time, but I just, you know, don't ever really remember feeling all that hungry, but, you know, I wasn't like overly worried about it or anything. But it got really bad in the fall of 2015. Uh, I was 19 years old at the time. I was in my hardest semester of college. I mean, at the same time, my hometown had caught on fire and like there was a whole fire that went through the whole county and I think it hit like three counties at the time. So I got involved in, vol in volunteering with that and I went to, um, I started helping out at our church that we go to and that's when I met Marty and he was my first boyfriend, like my first real boyfriend that I brought home and a lot of changes were going on because I really didn't know what to do with all of that at the time. It was a lot of information and a lot of stuff with me. Um, I was doing really well externally. I was, I was doing great. I mean, I was growing in who I am in myself. I was growing in who I am in Christ and who I am just overall and I really kind of figured out a lot of who I was and what my passions were in life and you know didn't realize how much I enjoyed being able to help help out fire victims and be a part of all of that so I, I was growing a lot but I think a side effect of it was my body didn't want to eat my being 110 pounds to 97 pounds and I lost that in a matter of two weeks I got I just a lot of things were going on and I just I couldn't figure out how to eat so it got really bad and it was probably a good three or four months that I pretty much ate nothing. So the underlying cause of my eating struggles was stress. And instead of what some people do, they when they're stressed they sit down with a bowl of ice cream or they overeat and indulge in food. Well for me, I undereat and I undereat to the point to where I don't eat it at all. I can't, I don't even drink water. So it it got very unhealthy for me and I just I was stressed. And for other people it'll be different things, but other symptoms included, you know, I didn't sleep hardly at all. You know, I'd get hungry in the middle of the night and bite, and in my mind I'm like, why am I hungry now? I'm gonna wait and eat in the morning, and it never happened. Um, my period got out of whack. Uh, I was moody, I was upset. I wouldn't say depressed so much, I was just kind of like in that phase of just really just kind of upset most of the time. Uh, I got unhealthily skinny. I mean, I got unhealthily skinny. You know, I had bags under my eyes, my hair was fine and brittle, my cheeks were sunken in, all my skin was sunken in. You could pretty much, I was, you know, pretty much skin and bones. And I actually looked at a picture a couple years, you know, last year, and I, I'd show you the picture, but I don't, I'd have to find it, but of how skinny I was, and I was not healthy. So, you know, and every time I ate, I wanted to throw up. And, you know, I just, I couldn't get myself to even bring the food to my mouth. And it was just, it was hard. And another thing is, if I was hungry in the day, I was hungry for about five minutes at a time. And if I 
did not eat in those five minutes, I didn't know when I'd be hungry again because it would just go away just like that. I'd be in the middle of one of my college classes and I'd be like, I'm hungry. And I'm like, okay, I'll just eat afterwards. And I couldn't, like, I literally, it's like a time clock that just ticked down five minutes, four minutes, you know, so on and so forth. And if I didn't eat, I wouldn't eat. So, and I couldn't make myself eat it. In the best way I think I can describe the feeling of not being able to eat, it's like a door that goes down in your stomach that blocks food from coming into it. And it's like, just, you can be hungry, but then it's like when that door goes down, it's like, it won't let anything in and it won't let anything get past your mouth or your nose for that matter. And it just, it won't let it and you cannot make your body do it. I mean, you could try, but it just, it's not gonna help you. So it just, it's kind of what it feels like in the best way I can describe not that feeling. So for those of you who have people in your life who are struggling to eat, you know, and this is again based purely off of my experience with it, disclaimer here, everybody that was trying to help me was truly trying to help me. It just, they didn't know how to help me so this was the best way they figured out how to help me. But the number one thing I can tell you not to do when someone in your life is struggling with this is to put is to put a big plate of food in front of them and expect them to eat it because it won't work and honestly all it will do is make them feel worse about themselves. They already feel bad about themselves. I already felt bad about myself. So when somebody put that big plate of food in front of me, it was like, here, eat this. Like you may have as well told a person who's overweight to not eat because that's how bad it felt. So it just, it didn't work. And another thing not to do, and really you shouldn't be doing this anyway, is to say things about how they look. Do not tell somebody how healthy they look. Do not say, do not comment on weight anyway, but do not say anything about, oh, you should eat a hamburger because you're really getting skinny. No, I can't eat that hamburger. There's a reason why I'm not eating right now. So, you know, in commenting on how skinny they are just, again, makes them feel more insecure about themselves. Another thing what not to do is to try and scare them into eating. For example, you might not be able to have kids if you continue down this road, or you won't be attractive. Well, I already know that, and I'm trying, but at the same time, I, I'm, I don't know what to do. My body's doing this crazy thing, and I, it's foreign to me and I'm going through something. I don't need comments on how bad I am or trying to scare me or anything like that. Um, and for those of you who have struggled with eating, if you have in the past or maybe right now, if you have any advice on what not to do for somebody who is trying to figure out what to do, please let me know in the comments below. So now that we got through the what not to do's for struggling eaters, here are things that you as family members and friends and people who are supportive, who are trying to support them, here are some things that you can do to help with them. You could start by offering small portions of food. Water, protein shakes, um, milkshakes, smoothies, pretty much anything small and light on the stomach. But don't force them to eat it. Just offer it, you know, once every few hours and they choose to feel like they are able to do it, let them. If not, just don't force them. Just really, I, I cannot emphasize, emphasize this enough. Do not try and make somebody eat. Just, just don't. Um, yeah, be supportive. Um, help them figure out the underlying issue. Help them figure out why they're not wanting to eat or why they can't. Whatever it is, just help them figure, figure it out. Be encouraging pray for them, all that. And another big thing and probably one of the most important things you can do as a supporting person is to just let them be, let them go through what they need to go through. You know, and I'm not saying to ignore them by any means. I am saying to let them figure out how to help themselves because by them knowing that you're there, it'll help them knowing that they've got a support system without feeling like they're being judged. 
And for me, people trying to pry, people trying to, you know, make me do things and make me eat only made me get worse. So treatment or as self-help, some of the things that help me out. Find the root cause as to why they're not eating. You know, whether it's anorexia, bulimia, another medical issue, you should probably go see a doctor if you're scared of that being the case. Um, it could be something emotional, whether it's grief, stress, um, major changes going on in their lives, you know, whatever it is. Um, for me, stress was the root cause. Um, starting off with protein shakes, smoothies, water, anything small and light on the stomach, don't try and just go full force into eating if you feel like you can because you won't feel too good afterwards. Um, don't force yourself. Don't, you know, take it slow. I mean, you know, do what you need to do to at least keep yourself functioning, but don't force yourself to do anything you feel like you can't. And seek medical help. I'm not a medical professional, but please go to a doctor. Go figure out what's going on. Again, whether it's emotional or physical or a health issue or something. But yeah, talk to a therapist, get therapy, or just talk to somebody about it. You know, talk to somebody who's been through it, or maybe just somebody you know and trust that you can try and come up with a solution together. Please just talk to somebody. So here's what I did once I realized that stress was the cause of my eating disorder. You know, I figured out the root cause, and now I've got to figure out how to get through it. And I learned how to work around it. You know, I started off by making myself eat snacks on hard days. I learned to keep snacks on me throughout the day because if I wanted, if I went through those five minute fears, phases where I couldn't eat, if I was stuck in the middle of a classroom, if I was... After my major time span of not eating during that fall of 2015 and I got through that initial phase and I kind of figured out how to help myself, I would go through stressful periods of two weeks at a time, you know, and I would time it too. I would be like, okay, you know, I would start to feel that door go down in my stomach and I would go ahead and I'm like, okay, I've got two weeks, get through what I need to get through, figure out how to work around the stress, figure out how to get through the stress. And, you know, after two weeks, I'd get some cons I would get myself concerned. I would constantly eat snacks. I would, you know, let myself, you know, a day or two where I just really didn't eat and hardly anything or anything for that matter. But once that two weeks was up, and again, this rarely happened, I would further figure out what I needed to do to get better. So, you know, and after that initial, that time span, I really didn't have much problems after that because I learned how to work with it. So yeah, two weeks at a time. And then I would make myself, I would just have to kind of force myself to eat and just work with it and, you know, learn what was stressing me out and figure out how to get through it. And as of today, most of my non-eating comes from just being busy with life. You know, chasing around a toddler because she doesn't sit still for two minutes or running errands. And I honestly, I, it's mostly forgetfulness, you know, it's not like I can't eat, you know, and honestly, I usually get hungry around probably 11 or 12 o'clock anyway in the day. But it's not like I can't eat, it's just that I have to be intentional with eating. So eating comes pretty naturally, you know, when I'm intentional about it, but I very rarely, every once in a while, I'll have a day or go for through a few days where I just, I get that block in my stomach, but it doesn't last too long anymore. But it's just, it's a work in progress, it's an effort. It, you know, for some of us, it just, it takes, eating is just, it takes a little bit more effort to get us to want to eat than people who don't struggle with it. So on that note, if you have any questions um, or maybe you've struggled with this yourself or you know some, or you know someone who struggled with this, um, if you're willing to, I'd love to hear your experiences, how you dealt with it, how you helped others deal with it. So just let me know in the comments below or you can private message me, check out my Instagram, you can private message me on there. But anyway, thank you for watching this video. God bless and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.